Welcome to CDC Growthonomics. Today we'll continue our conversation uh, on data science in fintech. So last time we had talked about and introduced why why data science is so important in fintech. Uh, today I want to specifically cover risk and and the function of risk and why it's important. So like we have talked about before, uh, as I was explaining it last time, that um, you know once you have built your KPI Dupont, you know across the line, mostly along the line of revenue, cost, and loss, uh, for many many fintechs. This is um, loss. Loss is uh, loss is one of the most important drivers of profit, which means they have to really manage loss down, and that is why risk is a very important function in most fintech. Uh, and now again, depending on where, uh, what kind of fintech you have, um, if you are in uh, sort of payment orchestration or uh, gateways or um, you know a company like PayPal and between send and receiver. Uh, then the way you know, the risk uh, is going to be basically all all things that fall under fraud, fraud or account takeover, all of those uh, sort of fraudulent transaction, fraudulent check, uh, um, uh, account takeovers, all, all of these cases where you want to use, um, uh, it's a huge uh, opportunity to use machine learning and AI uh, because, uh, and, and so, uh, the kind of um, uh, application because the data is so huge, uh, it's going to be fairly unbalanced data because there is a small percentage of transactions which are which are fraudulent. So um, you know that's that's where your uh, you know machine learning and AI is going to provide you very very significant opportunity versus uh, foundational uh, you know foundational or traditional statistics uh, you know regression and. Uh, and decision tree and key two key things I want to share and many of you uh, would probably have already very well developed machine learning and AI functionality within the organization you're probably using it but um, two tips here most important as you're building machine learning and AI models and we do that sort of all day long we've built fraud models from one of the top uh, banks uh, in US but we also uh, on a day-to-day -day basis work with startups and fintechs and uh, we are applying machine learning AI. Two, two very important things you should you should know is um, feature engineering is going to be hugely important, uh, and feature engineering which is hypothesis driven because those your your agents uh, have significant understanding of agents and those people who are fraud analysts have significant understanding of uh, fraudulent behavior and you want to capture that in complex hypotheses and build complex complex meaning intertwined feature features uh, you know typical for example i'll give you an example uh, a, a person who works in uh, sort of like a digital in a, in a bank in the ach uh, clearinghouse sort of capacity they would be they would have very strong hypotheses about you know when the check uh, sender and the check receiver are more than, for example, 50 miles away, and uh, the IP of uh, originating IP is in the third location beyond send and receiver, then, th then there is a huge chance of this uh, check being uh, like fraudulent. I'm making this up, but what I'm trying to tell you is that this should give you, if if you work with uh, 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 like people who are experts on field in the field, you'll get some really complex understanding, which you can't do with auto ML and AI, right? And and this is where your feature engineering, where you would code in saying, you know, the distance, uh, if the distance between sender and receiver is greater than 50 miles and the IP is greater than 50 miles of either of them, then feature equal to one versus versus zero. Uh, that kind of feature engineering is very, very important in this kind of unbalanced uh, fraud is an uh, usual application of fraud is very, very unbalanced data, uh, which means basically you're looking for needle in a haystack, you're looking for very small instances of something happening. And uh, in this case also, you will find that these kind of features will have a very small, a very small number of checks would qualify for this and they'll be, you'll find some really strong correlation that way. So most, one of the most important thing is be willing to do hypothesis driven feature engineering and spending enough time uh, when you are building fraud model. 
the second most important thing is to be willing to use external data fraud is never happening in vacuum uh, one the person who is doing fraud one place is going to be do, showing signs of doing fraud in other places there's also network effect happening so in fraud specifically external data appends uh, whether you for many any of the external bureaus axiom um, you know fico scores um, experience wherever you can get data external data that will have um, you know social media uh, data scrape the data scrape scrape social media and, and get data on those external i mean external data and external to company data is going to be very very important uh, as it relates to fraud and account takeover and those kind of like risk use cases um, and then the and the last thing that i want to uh, sort of share is that of all the models uh, fraud models deteriorate very fast because the fraudsters learn the behavior as you learn their behavior they learn the model like this is not going through this transaction is not going through because you have put in a mechanism to catch it and so this this uh, you know constant build is 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 a real reality here uh, you know your fraud model deteriorates 3 to 4 months or even depending on the kind of business you have even even faster uh, so i would say that um, more than anywhere else constant build uh, and actually a real application of machine learning where you are learning uh, learning constantly but in case of fraud you will need to do uh, re re feature engineering so a data scientist is constantly working in optimizing that fraud model because the model will deteriorate fairly quickly even if it is even if it is machine learning with the current features you'll have to add new features constantly uh, so so be be willing to do that these are the three most important things you should know uh, that one is the machine learning as a huge application so you would be wanting you want to solve your fraud account takeover with very significant machine learning and ai and in when doing that think about feature engineering uh, using experts complex hypotheses uh, be willing to use external data whether it is external to companies and just using social media scraping whatever else or buying that data and test with it like you can test with the data and then the third one is that be willing to and you want you need to understand fraud models uh, deteriorate very fast so you need to have a dedicated uh, person or team who they are constantly building new feature set uh, to improve that model uh, next time around so we focused on the loss side so one of the reasons why this was so important was that loss loss is very important uh, as it relates to fintech so next time we will move on to the uh, revenue side and we'll start talking about um, you know product and and so on.